it is May 2nd, 2024, and it's Thursday, which means it is a National Day of Prayer. Uh, I hope that <coughs> if you're in this area and you can join us, you can come and join us at the Osceola County Courthouse between 12 and 1 today, even if you can come for five minutes. Um, just to come and unite with your brothers and sisters in Christ as we intercede for our nation. We need it. This nation needs to return to God. The church needs to return to being the church and stand up for God's ways. What the Bible says. We can't embrace everything because God is holy and we need to be a holy church. God is love, so we need to be loving. Not self-righteous, but realize that our righteousness comes from Christ. It's because of what Jesus did on Calvary that we stand righteous. And that is a hope for others that think that they're not good enough. None of us are good enough to be right standing with God. It's only because of Jesus. That is the only hope for this nation, is people's hearts being turned to the Lord. That they realize how much God loves them. That John 3.16 is still <laughs> as good today as it was when it was written. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is a God of mercy and grace. He's a just God. And because he's just and righteous, there's a penalty for sin. He lays it all out in this Bible, a way for us to be made right, to be forgiven. But if we refuse that, then he has no other option but to pronounce the punishment that's in his word, because this word is unchanging. So, You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. You see, as harsh as what I just said might be, it may sound harsh. God, punish. Yes, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you don't have to be punished. You just have to accept the gift of salvation that is found through Jesus Christ. There is no under name under heaven by which man must be saved. Jesus was in the beginning. Jesus will ever be. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There is none other. And the greatest thing is that He loves you so, so much. Today, as it's National Day of Prayer, I thought about how our, our founding fathers st started, the things that they believed. You know, we have gotten so far away from the foundations in what we teach in our elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, our universities. And we are starting to see what happens when you take God out of your life. You see, God Almighty is the one who brings peace. He's the one who is true love. He's the one who brings true joy. He's the one who brings contentment. If you don't raise your children understanding that this is the Word of God, that there is a God Almighty that one day we all have to answer to, but that God dearly loves them. Well, then you open the door for the devil to lie to them, to deceive, because you have not built a strong foundation in our youth. And that's what we're seeing happening in our nation. We have a generation who grew up with people saying the Bible is old-fashioned. 
God loves you just like you are. The Word of God does not change. What this Bible says is what's true. If man changes it, twists it, that's man's thing. But salvation, true peace through joy, is found only in following the ways of the Lord. True love is only found in Christ through God Almighty. The Heavenly Father has given us an example of what true love is. Some of the things that for National Day of Prayer that we do is we pray for the military, we pray for government, we pray for media, business, education, the church, the family. Um, those are the, the points, the federal government, state government, local government. You, those points are, are prayed for. Benjamin Franklin, back on June 28, 1787, said this. This is an article I found in Faith Getaway, Gateway excuse me, uh, by Ron Morgan. And it has to do with Benjamin Franklin speaking on, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it, out of Psalms 127.1. And this how he explains. After the British surrendered, the American colonies had a nation but needed a constitution. We need to stop and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Father, that as we get into your word, Lord, as we learn from our past forefathers, Lord, that we would realize that we need you. Give us ears to hear, Holy Spirit, teach us. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment, Lord, that we would walk worthy, Father, of your name. That we would walk as children of the Most High God and show your love and your mercy and your grace, O Lord, but yet stand with authority against the enemy and his lies, Lord. Father, that we use the power that we have, O Lord, the authority that we have through Jesus Christ to intercede and truly make a difference. Father, as we unite in prayer as a body of Christ, Lord, I ask that you just have your way in each one of our hearts, O oh Lord, that we would repent wherever we need to repent, O oh Lord, and come back to you for wisdom, for guidance, for instruction. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So it says, the old articles of the, of the Confederation were inadequate. In May 1787, delegates gathered in Philadelphia for a convention to draft a constitution that would establish an effective federal government. They appointed George Washington, Washington as chair, but that's about all they agreed on. From the, the beginning, the delegates quarreled over deeply held disagreements as to the extent and form of the new government. That's when Benjamin Franklin, 81, rose to make a motion. Listen to what he says. In this situation of this assembly, groping as it were in the dark to find political truth and scarce able to distinguish it when presented to us, how has it happened, sir, that we have not hitherto once thought of humbly applying to the Father of Lights to illuminate our understanding? In the beginning of the contest we, with Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily player, prayers in this room for the divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of superintendent providence in our favor. To that kind of providence, we owe this happy opportunity of consulting in peace on the means of establishing our future national felicity. I, I have, excuse me, and have we now forgotten that powerful friend? In other words, God had guided us into all these situations. He's the reason that we're here, and have we forgotten our friend? Have you forgotten God as your friend? 
Has this nation forgotten God as their friend? I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, it is probable that an empire can rise, excuse me, without his notice, it is probable that an empire can rise without his aid. We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings, that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. He continued and said, I firmly believe this, and I also believe that without this concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the ba builders of Babel or Babel, however you want to say that. We shall be divided by our little partial local interest. Our projects will be confounded. We ourselves shall become a reproach. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessings on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business and that one or more of the clergy of the city be requested to officiate that service. Now that motion failed, but they still gathered a few days later on July 4th, 1787, General Washington led the delegation to a prayer service at where Reverend William Rogers offered these words. And this was the prayer that Reverend William Rogers said. And this is a period, O oh Lord, big with events, impenetrable by any human scrutiny. We fervently recommend to thy fatherly notice that August body, August meaning dignified or impressive body, assembled in this city who compose our federal convention, will it please thee, O thou, that this city who compose our federal convention, will it please thee, O that eternal I am, to favor them from day to day with thy immediate presence, be thou their wisdom and their strength, Enable them to devise such measures as may prove happily instruments for healing all divisions and promoting the good of the great whole, that the United States of America may furnish the world with one example of a free and permanent government, which shall be the result of the human and mutual deliberation, and which shall not, like all other governments, whether ancient or modern, spring out of mere chance or be established by force. We close this, our solemn address by saying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, and I'm going to go on ahead and read it. Matthew, oops, I know I put it in here. Matthew 6. It says this, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This Bible, this word was the foundation of our nation. We have record after records of our forefathers quoting and using the Bible goes on there's another one but I'm, I am out of time there is so much if you look at our founding fathers and their prayers you'll be able to find so many resources we need to get back to God I do want to end with 2nd Chronicles because we quote this a lot we quote one little part of it we always quote, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. I want to read to you when that was said. Second Chronicles 7, one. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's 
house, all I can think of is Jesus has come back. His glory has filled this earth. We as his children, the believers in Jesus Christ, we carry the Spirit of God Almighty. We carry the authority of the name of Jesus. What a responsibility. It goes on and says, And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Oh, if our government... Our president would truly call on the name of the Lord. How much would this nation change? Verse 12, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. This is important. Listen to what the Lord says to Solomon. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. You know, you hear it said, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's an area that God has chosen. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to stand by the side of Israel. It's such a tiny little piece of property compared to all the world. But Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He hates it because he knows that the Lord is coming back. And that's one of the places he is coming back to. You know what? As believers, we should care about that place. We care about our churches. We should care about Israel. Goes on, and this is what he says. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, so if all these things happen because people turn away from the Lord, yet, again, he's a God of mercy and grace. He says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Ask the Lord to show you, to teach you, what does he mean? To show you how much he loves you, how much he loves this world, the people of this world. How much he loves Israel. Stand strong. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I ask for prayers of protection everywhere where people are gathering. Pray for the students that are standing strong for their faith in Jesus Christ, for their faith in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That peace be turned back to those schools, that they bring in the peace of the Lord. It's part of the armor of God, our peace shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel is a gospel of peace. Now those that don't like it are going to fight against it. Oh, but those that receive it, what a joy they will have. A treasure that money can't buy. Way beyond anything this world can give. So don't be ashamed to tell someone about Jesus. What Jesus did for you is a great testimony. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, 